What's going on everybody? Toby Wan Shinobi here and today I want to discuss a critical strategy for survival and getting eliminations in Fortnite Zero Build. This skill, often unknown by average players, is an essential part of every top player's game. And today I'm going to show you how to implement it into your game and greatly improve your effectiveness in Fortnite Zero Build. So what is this magical skill that I'm referring to? In simple terms, it's about being aware of your surroundings and having multiple contingency plans for various scenarios. Now, this is best shown rather than explained, so let's get into it. All right, I'm in a private map right now, but I'm gonna show some actual gameplay examples after this. Right now, I'm just gonna break down the fundamentals, the rules for how to win more fights and how to survive more fights on a very consistent basis by using the strategy. So it's really a three-part checklist, and here it is. Number one, you've gotta scan your environment completely scan your environment. And the first thing you're doing when you scan is looking for enemies. Once you know where the enemies are, then you know how to play advantages against them. You can't really play advantages if you don't know where your enemies are because they could get you from a different angle than you expected, or you can kind of just put yourself in a bad spot. Okay, once you've scanned your environment for the enemy, number two, you gotta find out how to get an advantage on them using your equipment or the environment around you, and preferably a combination of both. All right, that is part two. Two. Now, part three on that checklist is having an exit. You've got to have an exit in mind in case the fight goes sideways, in case things go bad, and that can also be inventory or it can be things like cars or jump pads, etc. Right? So you're in a POI, you're scanning for players, and then you're looking for advantages on how to get an advantage on that player using the environment and your equipment. And then number three, you're having an exit in mind in case that fight goes sideways. Now, that's a whole different way of thinking than most most players because most players will jump in and they might check off step one and step two and go okay I see the enemy I think I have this idea of like how I'm gonna get this angle and they'll kind of run out here and then they'll get behind this tree or something the person will fry their tree the tree breaks and then they didn't think about the third step oh shoot what if this fight doesn't go in my favor now what do I do and then they fumble around they go oh, okay shockwaves and by now they've already lost half their health now they're shockwaving out here into the random area and now they just got killed on their second shockwave before they even got their second one off. Something like that, you, you know what I'm saying. Now a more seasoned player and a more high skilled player has that third step in mind and that is finding an exit. So let's return back to step two. Let's say we know that there's a player on this house right here. They're holding high ground, we've scanned our environment, we looked around, right? We know that there is a player on that house. Now we've gotta find an advantage against them. So I'm looking and I'm scanning the environment and I see a couple things. Number one, I see a car right there, which is one, an advantage in a lot of ways because it's mobile cover. You can drive a car around, get behind it and use it as mobile cover and you get different angles on the person on the roof and bait them out. And number two, that's an exit as well. So if things go wrong, I could exit with that vehicle right there. Just knowing its location is really, really helpful. So now we're looking for our advantage. We've got an exit in mind. Now we're looking for an advantage. This bush right here seems like a pretty good advantage because if I can show shockwave into that bush and then see if the enemy will peek me i might be able to get a couple shots on them or even a, a sniper headshot right so we snipe we slide into the bush we look right here the enemy peaks okay so we didn't hit any shots now we're in kind of a standoff now a lot of players might go you know what let's just send this let's shockwave right onto that house and take this fight i encourage you not to do that let's just pause for a second go through our three-step checklist number one we know where the player is we've scanned the environment can we find any more advantages in this fight how can we use their position against them or how can we use something against them to get them off that roof what i'm looking at right here is this little piece of structure that's a nice little uh, opportunity for a jump shot. I'm also looking at this deck right here. That's another opportunity for a jump shot. And I'm also looking at this bush because I can fall back to that bush. That's kind of my exit plan, right? So I've got those two things in mind, an advantage, an advantage, and then an exit. Also, I know that the cars over here, if I really want to exit, I can shockwave to that car and drive away. Also that car over there. I can also get myself inside the house and shockwave through the roof and get out without them really knowing where I went. A lot of times if you shockwave inside of a structure, it's hard for people to track you because there's a structure blocking their view from where you went. So here we go. This player's on the roof. I'm not loving that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shockwave like this and I'm instantly gonna go down here. 
Now, that might surprise you because a lot of players will just stand up here and do this fight right here where they get in this stupid fight, but I had the advantage already in my mind of how I'm going to beat this player. And I'm using this piece of cover right here because when this player comes over to this ridge, they're not gonna see me behind this piece of cover right here and they're gonna go, for just a half a second, they're gonna go, wait, where'd he go? And then they might go, shoot, as I jump up and pop them in the face, and then I disappear immediately. Okay, so I've got now two shots on them, or maybe just one shot, but either way, the fight's not going in their favor, so now they have an option to either run or fight. And if they don't have a contingency plan in mind, then they're kind of screwed unless they got shockwaves. So maybe shockwaves are the contingency plan. Now we jump on and we take a fight. Now the fight doesn't go in our favor. They do something crazy to us. Guess where we go? Straight back to our bush because we had the bush in mind. This is our exit, this is our backup. Also another advantage, if they wanna chase us now, we're concealed, they can't see us, and it makes the fight very, very easy for us. Okay, now pretend like they just kinda of fried us through the bush and now they're pushing into the bush. We gotta go, guess where we're going? We're going to the car, because we know that this car exists. We can just drive out and leave. So that is the type of thinking, the type of planning that higher tier players have. Before they get into fights, they already have two or three plans in mind. You know, ways to take advantage of the enemy in the fight using the environment, ways to escape the fight if they need to, exits, and ways to get out basically if they get third party. So now let's go into some actual games and show you how I'm scanning the environment and finding advantages and breaking this stuff down in real gameplay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop at fencing fields here. And I already know that there's some exit options in fencing fields, so I like that. It's always good to know the POIs, you just general terrain, and kind of know where the exits are already, like jump pads, right? There's a jump pad at this place. If I was in that area, that is an exit, right? You can exit a fight quickly, get away from your enemy, get some space and reposition if things are going south. Now, I also know that there's a car right here, and that is one of the reasons I like to drop over at fencing in this area, because there's usually a G wagon right here yep so there's a g-wagon right here and there's a slurp truck right here okay which is somewhat of an advantage now we're gonna go down here we're gonna grab weapons okay now we're scanning our environment you may have noticed that i just took a little turn back and i'm looking to see if anyone follows me so i need to know where my enemies are i see a glider coming in so i need to think about that i think the glider is at uh this location over here Good to know. And it's a dancing AI. <laughs> okay, cool. Earned me a kill, but even if that wasn't an AI, right? It's good to know that there's somebody behind me because now I need to be making plans about possible pushes from behind me. So knowing where your enemies are is step number one, really, because then you can kind of form some plans. Now, as I push up here towards this pond, I need to be thinking about this roof and someone being in this building because that's like my main issue, right? If somebody's in that building, there's a problem. Here's a bush that is a nice piece of advantage, right? So as I push up, I can fall back to this little house here and then I can fall back to this bush. So that's my contingency plan. If I get pushed on my way in here, fall back to the shack, use it as cover to break line of sight and then go to the bush. Okay, now as I come up here, I'm using this rock because I don't want to get fried. Okay, and now I'm scanning my environment. I'm just trying to figure out if there's anyone here. If somebody pushes me, I'm running back over here to that car or the bush. Okay. Now we're scanning our environment again, right? Thinking about, oh my gosh, that actually scared me. Okay, so we got pushed. Uh, and we used a piece of cover that player did not. I don't know why I got scared, jump scared by the first player I saw. I just literally thought there was nobody in my spot. But uh, right there, my plan was to use this cover. As soon as I saw that player, I hit the escape button and pulled to my menu. But I was trying to use one of these little trees because it's all I had, uh, right? Is to use that against them because they were pushing a straight line. Now that right there, is what I call a kill lane. He wasn't quite in a kill lane, but he was in a space that had no cover and I had cover, right? So that is always an advantage that you're looking for. Anytime that you're scanning environments, you need to be looking for kill lanes. This right here is a massive kill lane. If I get hurt and I get into this bush and somebody decides to push me right here, 
That's really, really bad news for them. This is a kill lane. So I would love to drag a player through here. So when you're scanning environments, you need to be looking for areas that you want to drag enemies through. Out in this courtyard, I'd love to get someone out in this courtyard as well, right? This is like a bad spot for my enemy to be if they want to chase me. Okay, so I just heard somebody break something over here. I see them up in that house. I think I just saw them up in that house. I'd like to get them in a kill lane. So this is my idea right now. If they get down here, they're in big trouble. I've got a right shoulder peak. So now I'm thinking about exit options. I can go up these stairs. I have that car over there. I have a bush over there. So that bush is actually really, really, really nice advantage. But this right shoulder peak is actually better. If he gets out here, he's in trouble. He's dead, see? That's a kill lane right there. And uh, you don't want to be that player. I think that was an AI. Maybe not. I don't know. Either way. That right there is a perfect example of bringing your enemy into a kill lane, right? They got curious, they came out too far, and look how much trouble they got in once they were out here. There's just no cover whatsoever. If you want to bait an enemy to get out into a kill lane, that's super ideal. My next option for that fight was to go over here to this bush if things went wrong. Try to get this bush, play that, and then if things really go wrong, then I'd get out with a car. That was my exit plan. So I'm going to go ahead and move through this environment in a way where I'm not going to get taken off guard. And if I do, my exit and my advantage are right here. Advantage is this bush and exit is that car. Keeping those things in mind. Now, if somebody pushes me right now, I'd love to play this spot right here. Okay, now I'm looking at that. I see this bush. Right, I'm seeing this player right here. Okay, what I'm going to do... See, right there. I wanted to explain it, but I didn't have a second to do it. I wanted to play this spot right here. I really wanted to say that right before I did it. But what I wanted to do is play... If, if he was going to push, I love this spot. You know why I love this spot? Because they're at a massive disadvantage. If they get up here, or if they get up here, they're at a huge disadvantage. Also, my angles are pretty much covered, except for like right here and maybe right here. But so it's a weird angle for someone to hit you from. But what I can do in this spot is I can jump up and shoot. Take a jump shot at people. Anyone that gets on this roof is in big, big trouble because they're not going to be able to see me right here. So I had that in mind. My contingency plan was to fight right here. And there's also exits, right? I can get out right here. I can drop down right there. I can drop down right here. Tons of exits. So this is a great spot to fight. Lots of cover, lots of little exits to get out, right? I can go through here. I can go through here. And then I can get to my car. If I really need to, I can outmaneuver in such a way that I can get back to a different position for an advantage or an exit. If you know how to play cars as cover, it can be really, really advantageous. But you also got to know how to drive vehicles without taking damage. And that is also about scanning the environment, right? So if we're going to be pushing somebody in this environment right here, say they're down at these docks, right? The way to drive it is not by driving straight at them like this. You got to scan your environment. And think about advantages. OK, we have this bush right here we could play. If they're down at the docks and we want to catch them, we don't drive straight at them. We go around. We conceal our location here, right? We go around, we go around. We're still pretty concealed right here if they're down at the docks. And now we can play this rock right here. And if things go wrong and they start chasing us, we can get over to this bush. I think I just saw somebody over here. Okay, there's a next bush right there. Okay, so if this was a real player, which it's not, it's an AI, I'd, I would drive over here and I'd use this as my advantage. Right? That's the move. That was my move. That is just pure advantage right here in this bush. They can't see me and I can see them. That is concealment and it works in every fight. So bushes are just always great options to look for when you're scanning your environment. Always look for bushes. All right. So there's a crown player over here. There's also a medallion over here. Now I'm going to drive left. I see that there's a bush behind me right here. I know that that is a contingency plan right now. So if this player pushes me, I'm going back to that bush looking for where they're at. There's also a bush right here. So I'm going to drive up to this bush and I'm planning to use that against them. If that doesn't work, I can drop back to the next bush. Okay, there's the player. Okay. Reload our weapons. There we go. So we could have easily lost that fight if we didn't have that plan in mind about what we were going to do in a fight, right? It's a great example. 
having that in mind because I knew there was two bushes I could play. And that player, if he had a plan in mind, he should have gone straight for that car. As soon as he saw that car, he should have got in it and left. Okay, we're gonna get flow berries because I'm planning, if I need to go, I pop a flow berry and then I shockwave and I can get really far away. Okay, it looks like these are possibly more AI. Yeah, that's wild. Okay, I'm getting my cards too far away. Okay, this is why we keep close to cars. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I just nailed this. What I was hoping right there. Okay, so now we need to just keep moving. I want this guy to push me. I have shockwaves and I have flow berries if I really need to go, but I'm looking for him to get in this fight. Okay, now I'm playing this high ground right here. Okay, here's my Flowberry play right here, Flowberry Shock. We're gonna get ahead and we're gonna spray his window. Just saw footsteps in front of me. Now we got this bush, okay, so now we have to form a quick plan. We got a bush, we got Shockwaves, we got Flowberries. So we can reposition if we need to. But he's in a kill lane. Okay, that is not the real player. Somebody was just shooting. Okay, is this gonna light my bush on fire? Yes it is. So now we gotta go. And we're gonna have our flowberry out. We're gonna hit the flowberry. We're gonna stay moving. And we're getting ready with our shockwave. Because I don't know where this player is, but I'm gonna shock back to fencing. Because I know that there's advantages there. I know about all the advantages inside fencing, like this bush. Here we go. I'm gonna play this bush. I don't know where this player is this advantage was in mind. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go for the Amazon warehouse, but I need to do it in such a way that I'm scanning my environment for enemies, thinking about where they could be, which would be like really likely to be up there. So right now my option is to use these trees as cover. I also have a flowberry uh, shockwave combo that I can use. All right, so as I stated earlier, like your inventory is also gonna be part of the plan, right? If you have like flowberry shocks, for instance, in your inventory, you're gonna play a little different and be able to do different things than if you don't. So you always have to look at your inventory first, as well as the environment, what the environment is offering, what your inventory offers, and just kind of like feel it all out and then come up with some plans. Uh, this player has all the medallions right here and is a super sweat or something. So we need to be careful here. Our plan is to get them out in the open. I don't think that's them. Okay, our new plan is to move. So I need to come up with a plan to fight this player, and I don't see any clear advantages right now, so I'm going to back up a little bit, and I'm just going to kind of scan for a second to think about this. I think that guy's keen. I'm, yeah, he just got killed. Okay, so now we're going to push up. Play this high ground right here. He's probably in the bush. Okay, he's not. And we're just going to jump out of this car. Now, I knew that that player was probably hurt because I heard a lot of gunshots go off. We got all the loot in the world. Now, we can't get too addicted. We can't get too focused on the loot. Don't get too loot focused. Always be looking for enemies because people hear gunshots from 260 meters out. All right, now we got God loot and we're out. So the reason that I was going to drive the car down here and jump out on the left side is because they would think that I'm driving by this way to get an angle and then I jumped out on the left side and caught him by surprise. They'd probably think I'm still in the car so they'd rotate around the tree to get away from me and I have a pretty good idea that they're hurt and then I was just gonna finish them off real quick that way. All right, so now we have all the medallions so people know exactly where we are. There are five players left in the game so we can be really smart about our rotations here because people know where we are. So for one, being out in the open like this is dangerous because people will shoot your car. And now we're looking at zone and honestly the best place to be Oh, two other players left. And we're basically just gonna keep rolling around and scanning. Now, as I'm rolling around and scanning the environment, I'm looking for advantages and places to play in case I get in trouble. And that's usually bushes, to be honest. Like, bushes are really just great. And then I have full shockwaves. So right now, I'm a little more loose with my options. I'm trying to find these players first before I really do anything. Uh, before I come up with a plan, I'd like to know where the enemies are. Step one, find the enemies. Step two, analyze the environment, find advantages. And step three, figure out your escape plan. Then you can decide if you want to fight them. So now we need to find bushes that are in zone. Okay, so that's an AI. Be careful about taking a shot on this guy. Do it quick. Okay, 
And now we're looking for that other player that we saw footsteps from earlier. Okay, so this bush right here is awesome. And now I have options. Oh, there's the other player. Okay, so they have high ground, but they do have to come to me eventually. As long as I don't get headshot sniped right here, we're okay. And I know that I have lots of shockwaves. I know there's cover right here. Oh, he hit me. Okay. Okay, I have shockwaves. Splashes. Shock. I have the medallion for dashing. We get some distance. Okay, now my plan is to fry this guy as he comes up here. If he comes up here, he's not. Okay, we have plenty of shockwaves. We're just going to use them. We're going to play this cover right here. Okay. So, the plan right there was to just use this piece of cover and use jump shots. Most people aren't expecting that. If you get head level and you're just jumping up and down, shooting as you pop up from above the cover, it just works really well. So that was my plan right there. Also, I had shockwaves. I had the medallions. I had ways to get out if things started to really go south, and there was plenty of cover here. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. I tried to explain as best I could while playing, and maybe I didn't do the best job, but the three things you really got to be looking for. Number one, look for your enemy. Number two, look for advantages. How are you going to beat them using the environment around you? Where can you lead them into? Also, maybe you can bait them to come into what they call a kill lane. Like I explained earlier, that is an area that they have no cover and you have cover. You have a massive advantage in that situation. And then you just got to fry them right when they're out in the open. Even if they've got you really hurt and you run back into, say, a bush or behind a right shoulder peak or something like that, and they run out into that kill lane, do not hear Heal. Fry them while they're out in the middle of the open because that is your time to work your advantage because it's a massive advantage to have cover when your enemy does not. As long as you're using that cover well, you will win the fight as long as you're not super low HP. And then the third thing you got to look for is an exit. So if you cover all three of those things, if you know where your enemy is, you know what your advantages are using the environment around them and how you can use the environment against them. And then number three, have an exit in case things go south, then you are much more likely to survive every single Single fight. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. If you like these types of videos, go and check out my must watch playlist on my YouTube channel. I promise you will not regret it. If you want to take your learning to the next level, you can also join the Shinobi clan and get access to the private discord full of awesome resources and incredible people. If you join at the master level member, you'll also get access to training three days a week with myself and other master members where we do scrimmages, we do demos, I answer any questions you might have, and you basically get hands-on training three days a week for two hours at a time. And if you really want to expedite your learning, you might consider booking a one-on-one -on -one training session with me at tobywanshinobi.com. And if you want to support me in the easiest way possible, use code tobywanshinobi in your Fortnite item shop and leave a thumbs up on this video. All right, guys, thank you so much. Have yourself a great day. Shinobi out.